welcome. My name's Davo, and I have a very special guest with me. I have Wojciech Kroboczyński. How was that? It's Wojciech Kroboczyński. Oh, it's close. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Uh, close, close, close. close. Wojciech Kroboczyński from Rebel Games. Yes, hi. Hi! I say hi, we've been sat on this sofa for like 20 minutes yeah. already. So <laughs> look at these, look at these entries. Now, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about some Zona, the secrets of Chernobyl. Yes. I'm really excited for this. So me and Abby unboxed this a little while ago in one of our streams, but I want to know a little bit more in depth about the game. Cool. So here it is. This is, this is it. This is Zona, the secrets of Chernobyl. So for everyone at home that maybe doesn't know, can you describe it in one sentence? So Zona, the secret of Chernobyl is an adventure game uh, based in the area of Chernobyl where players play as scavengers roaming the area and gathering artifacts, fighting mutants and anomalies and so on. Ooh, that's... Yeah. that's the ultimate that's goal scary. is to reach the sarcophagus and uncover the most powerful artifact. So the sarcophagus is, that's where the nuclear meltdown happened. Yes. It's the power plant. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. Got it. And I think the first thing people notice when they see the box is this lovely lady on front. She, she's, yeah. got, she's got fantastic ginger dreadlocks. Who, yeah, who's she's she? cool. She's one of the scavengers uh, that live in the Zona. As you see, she's got a, this symbol. Uh, you can learn a little bit about it in the game and uh, also in the short stories about the world of the game. Um, and she's quite mysterious, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, she's got half of her face covered, so I can't yes. really see her. So I think she looks kind of fierce, but fierce is in the way that I wouldn't want to get involved. Yes, in definitely if, stuff you're, she's doing. if you're in the zone that you, you have to be kind of, you know, uh, brave and, yeah. uh, and nothing to, to play with, you know. I'm getting a lot of that from her. So I think let's give it a go, let's, let's unbox it. So. Whoa, okay. So first things first, inside, I think the thing most people are going to be excited for is the board. Yes. Now, oh, oh, it's very big. Who is that? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, is this the right way up? Yeah, here we go. So massive board here. Um, I don't know if you guys at home can see, but it's double-sided. Yes. Uh, let's give it a flip. There we go. Whoa, two sides. What, what's the difference between uh, the two? This side is for one or two players and this side is for three or four players. Okay, cool. So you can play it solo on the other side if you want. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There are some minor differences uh, between the sides. Okay, so we're now looking at th the zone from, from overhead. Uh, we've got places like the quarry, the village, the frontier, the junkyard. And as we go over there, they get more red until, until we head to like the Moscow Eye, Pripyat, power plant, and I guess the sarcophagus. Yes, yes, yes. Like the closer you are to the radiated core of the sarcophagus, the more dangerous it is. Uh, the the more mutants appear and the stronger mutants and anomalies. Well, hang on, mutants. Yes, yes. You didn't, you didn't tell me about mutants okay, before. Okay, okay. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. So the whole zone was uh, closed by the military, mm. and like nobody is officially going in there or outside of there. Okay, so like it's everyone's back. Oh, is that what this line is? Yes, yes. Uh, so, oh, and you can see, that's, is that where the military track point is? Because it's got it's, the solid lines. This is the entrance to the secret location, but the whole Ooh. area is enclosed, yes. Ooh. There are some secret locations like military bunkers or labs or, uh, yeah, weird stuff. And uh, like, so the people who live there are like renegades. Mm. And they uh, basically scavenge what's left and uh, try to get uh, to know what, what, what's the nature of these artifacts and also the mutants and anomalies that appeared after the, uh, the waves of radiation in, um, in the power plant. Wow. And what's everyone, so why do people want to get to the power plant? You said there was something special there? Yes, because uh, as I said, the, these people who live there, uh, the scavengers, they, they, they have a sort of a community, like a weird community. Mm. And they, they compete with each other, but at the same time, they, they know they needed each other to stay alive uh, in the area. So, and they have their own stories, their own legends, since they, they, have, they have been there for, for quite a, a bit. 
And like the most known legend is that there is a, the most powerful artifact lies in the sarcophagus of the power plant. Oh, Nobody okay. really knows what it is and what its nature is. And the artifacts are, are always as dangerous as useful. So ah, okay. they, they, like, it's not like a magic wand or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> that would be the best artifact yeah, to come across. <laughs> but but it, it, it could, uh, I don't know, rip your hand off. Well, oh, okay. So it's like it's it's very dangerous and mm. uh, expensive, of course. Yeah. But uh, but it's not like obviously good or bad. Right. So risk and reward. Risk yes. and reward. So what else have we got in the box? So fold this away. Uh, next up, we've got there's a lot of stuff in here. I think the next thing that a lot of people are going to be interested in are these miniatures. Yeah. So what I really love is that they come in a little tray that you can actually take out yes it's really cool so tell me about these uh, okay so basically the first thing i want to say is that we were really happy with these miniatures i personally love miniatures and i've been painting miniatures as long as i've been playing games so mm. um yeah we're really happy with these and um, they're plastic mm. they're like one piece so we don't have to glue or or, or, or <laughs> don't have to glue <laughs> it unless you, unless you throw it on the floor <laughs> Uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, we're really happy with them. And these are like ten of the of the scavengers that that live in the zone. Okay. Everybody here has their own backstory and uh, their own goals. Um, you can you can find out more in the, in the short stories I told you about. Oh, awesome! So the short stories. So you've written. You guys have written a load of short stories around yes. the main game which tell people a little bit more lore and maybe a few secrets. Yes. But where can people find those? Uh, you, you can find them on rebelgames.eu. Go there and, uh, and you'll find them. Well, you, you're going to have to scavenge for them. Yes. That's what you're going to have to do. <laughs> Only a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you can learn a little bit about each one of these characters. Like, for example, this guy with the exoskeleton. You, you can learn a little bit uh, about how he like got to look like this because he didn't when he first arrived at, at Zona. Well, he looks pretty. Looks pretty gnarly. Yeah, yeah he's n nobody really likes him, but he's you know useful for the he obvious does, reasons. He does look scary. Yeah, yeah, I mean, very fashionable as well. Actually, <laughs> I quite it's quite gothic. I'm quite into it. I'm quite yeah. into it. That's one of the things we've got inside this box. We've got a ton of stuff. Um, so we've got the actual miniatures of the characters here that I've really poorly put. Put away, we won't, we won't <laughs> comment on that. Um, but we also have the cards that go with them, so you can actually find out what all these characters do. Yeah. Um, what have I got, what have I got, what have I got? Here we go. So, what are th these are the characters we've got. Yes, uh, so everybody has their own like uh, characteristics, of course, the boring stuff. And then well, you said boring. Like you, you kind of just need it. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, of game, course, of you? course, of course. And then the the ability that that are there that is like distinct for for this particular mm. character. And on the other side, you've got the same like high resolution, beautiful art. And then uh, and then you've got some um, some things that you need to set up the game. Mm. So at the beginning of the game, you already start with some mutants and some damage. Sometimes some money some kind of reputation because like it's not like you start a game when the scavengers arrive at this they've, they've already been there they, mm. they live there mm. everybody knows them mm. uh, so uh, like everybody has has a reputation and this is like the reputation uh, between the the other scavengers so if you for example work with the military a, the, and they don't like military mm. then you'll have a bad reputation yeah yeah but if you if you help some people out or or bring them food or whatever then your reputation will be good, and some like better things might happen to you when you're in the wasteland. It's kind of ominous. I'm kind of into it. Yeah. Now I, I realize that these are actually double sided. Yes. I was showing you guys at home the other side. What's the diff? Yeah. Uh, so like the 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 this side is hmm. like your damage track, your characteristics, your ability, and on the other uh, on the other side, the, this is a the stuff that you only use when setting the game up. So oh, that's clever. So when you don't need it, yeah, you just flip it and uh, you don't there need the more. Oh, exciting. Uh, so what else have we got in here? So we've got a lot of these. Are these player boards? 
Yeah, uh, yes, these are backpacks, but backpacks. basically. So we'll put all of your stuff in here, either in here. This is like a, an additional spot in a backpack. So some, some kind of gear might give you an additional place to, to uh, hide things in. And here you put, put your, uh, how it's called, your, uh, your clothes, basically. So oh, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what you're wearing. I mean, <laughs> that, the, the girl on the front of the box, she had a great outfit. Yeah. I want to get that one. So what else have we got in here? So there's a load of cards. Yes, so a lot of stuff. <laughs> that I will just show you guys at home. <laughs> so we have we have been playing a little bit of this around the office, um, which is why it's a little bit of a mess. But you get you get a ton of stuff in here. Um, so let's go through the cards. So what are what what are these? Okay, these are. Uh, you use them to track how exhausted you are. So okay. uh, the more you travel, the more you fight, you get more and more exhausted. Basically, in, in like mechanics terms, it works that whenever you roll a dice, you can re-roll one die uh, just by turning it up. So whenever you're at five, you cannot do this anymore. You have to rest. Mm. And it also can be uh, quite dangerous because some event cards might cause you to become exhausted and then you get damaged. So, so. event cards are the big ones? Yes, the big ones. Okay, so let's have a look at these. So you get tons of different variants in here. Um, reference cards, nice for knowing what's going on. Uh, we've got the government bunker. I've yes. got ones for botanical lab. That sounds lovely. Yeah. Uh, underground archive. We've got emission observation ob observatory, observatory. It's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we've got these these green ones and these yellow ones. Yes, and then the red ones. Oh, so oh yeah, yeah, I left those in there. depending depending on where you are, uh, different things will happen. Of course, if you're one, in one of the secret locations, like the, uh, for example, what do we have like the government bunker. Um, there are some cards that are specific for the bunker, so some secrets you can uncover only in the bunker, mm. and some things that you may get only in the bunker. Oh. And um, of course, the red ones are are the the most important ones, because mm. because um, here, as you see, I don't want to show it to the camera, because secret. It's a, se it's a <laughs> secret. Oh, it's uh, nice, but but you, you you see a part of the card that's upside down. And this is actually the ending right. that you read after you finish um, reading the rest of the card. Mm -hmm. So it might happen that you reach the sarcophagus but die in the process and never get to know what the artifact was mm. or uh, to, to, to gather its power. There's, there's a lot of narrative. I'm, I can't show you guys at home. I don't want to spoil it. But you get a lot of narrative on these cards. Tons of different things happen. And you're going to be learning more about the world and more about these locations. I'm yes, L like the yellow zone and the green zone are the the places that you'll be most often. And so, and these cards are actually, in my opinion, like the the most fun thing in the game because weird things might happen. You might meet some people that may behave differently uh, depending on what your reputation is. For example, mm. you may find a lair of mutants, for example, or a or a dog. Well, okay. So you might have some decisions to make, for example. So the layer of mutants is awful. If I found that, I would yeah. have not be impressed. <laughs> uh, so th there's always decisions. Not always, but sometimes there are decisions to make. For example, you see that there are some scavengers that are ambushed by mutants. So you can either help them and fight the mutants and risk that you'll become damaged uh, or die. Okay. Or you can just walk away and pretend like nothing has happened. That's, that's likely what I'm going to do, <laughs> <laughs> if we're being yeah. really honest. Just but but head in the sand, pretend it didn't happen. So we've got other stuff in here in an, in, a, in in my box as well. So I've got lots of tokens here. Yes. Are these monsters? Yes. These are uh, these are mutants and anomalies that you'll meet uh, in the in the, in the zone. Mm. So there are like four categories. There are yellow mutants, yellow anomalies, green mutants, and green anomalies. Ah, and can so you, you can tell there's a little square, I don't yeah. know if you guys at home can see, a little square on them. Exactly, the green square or a yellow triangle. And uh, of course the yellow ones are from the, from the more dangerous zone, they're more dangerous and uh, tougher mm. and weirder and more mutated. Oh boy. <laughs> um, yeah, so just to give you guys an idea of the kind of things we're going to be running across, I've got it says it says octopus on her voice. Yeah. That's not an octopus. <laughs> it's kind of uh, these are the names that the scavengers give give to them. So they usually name them after something that 
uh, reminds it. Uh, in, in the, it's got a real world analogy. Yeah, okay, so we've got feral dogs. I've got rats. Fleshers. Um, they, it, basically, it's like a parasite that's eating the pig's head. Yeah. Um, I feel a bit bad for the pig, if I'm, if I'm brutally honest there. But tons of monsters, tons and tons. Yes. And I really like that they come in this. So when you're setting up when you're playing the game, you can just take it out and plonk it yes. on the table. Yes, you don't have to, to you know, uh, just look for for anything uh, during the game. Uh, unless unless you're like us and you pack <laughs> up in a hurry. Um, but no, we have other stuff in here as well. Yes. Um, you've got loads of tokens as well, because there's different types of health in the game, is there? Uh, there's only one type of health, but there mm. are three types of damage. That was it. So, so what are the types of damage? So th th there's uh, radiation, there's a mental damage that mm, anomalies might do, and there's just like regular, I don't know how to call it, flesh damage. Okay. So like, um, and whenever you're dealt uh, any amount of, uh, of damage of, of a certain type, you can mm. block it by different equipment. So if you have like a suit that protects you from radiation, it might protect you from from radiation damage, mm. but not from being, you know, uh, shot at, for example. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, cool. So yeah, loads and loads of stuff in there. I'll just reiterate, tons of stuff in this box. Just, it's just a lot of bits, isn't there? It's awesome. And one thing I will shout out. Can we just talk about the insert? I will just say, I love inserts that are really well designed. This one gets my seal of approval. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I know the guys at the, at the studio will be very happy about it because they. Oh, put it makes, a lot it of makes thought. such a difference. <laughs> it really does. Um, yeah, really makes such a difference when you take the time to put it away. Not like me, who just shoves <laughs> things in there. Uh, but no, tons and tons of stuff. So one thing I am interested about um, is when you're going to, to make a game like Zona. Of course, it changes a lot during development. How how did Zona start off? It's actually a tough question. I think nobody remembers how it started because okay. it was so many years ago. Like how the authors, of course, it? remember, but the, uh, they started uh, creating the game, I think, about seven or eight years ago. Really? Wow. Yeah. There are like two people who are very excited about the theme, about the adventure games, you know, gamers, of course, and uh, enthusiasts of Chernobyl. Mm. Uh, one of the authors like sent me the pictures this year when he went on a trip to Pripyat and to Chernobyl. Can you do that? Can yes. you just can yes. you just head over there on a yes, on holiday? Yes, yes, and uh, yeah. Uh, this is this is something that we'll probably prove next year. Really? But I don't want to tell anything more about oh, it. Oh, <laughs> we've got we've got a secret. We've got a secret. Yeah. That's really awesome. And I think you were mentioning earlier about it. Started off as a game called the Emission. The Emission Zone? Zone. Yeah, yeah. We changed the name I think last year uh, because we wanted it to to convey the theme very well and to have this uh, Eastern European thing. Because um, this game, it might appear as a post-apocalyptic theme, but it's not. It's, like the world is still. It's going on. Yeah. Like only this zone is is excluded from the society, and it's it's uh, it's, it's it's weird, and it may lead to a, an end of the world depending on what happens. Well, uh, yeah, you're heading into spoiler territory, but that sounds <laughs> that sounds <laughs> ominous. I mean, they're going to be on these on these secret cards. Yes. Ooh. Well, that's been a quick unboxing, quick look at some of the stuff inside of Rebel's new game, Zona: The Secrets of Chernobyl. If you guys at home do want to check it out, it's available now. Yes. Available now, so you can go and pick up a copy. So I'm excited. We're going to play a game a little bit later. Thank you very much. Oh, awesome. No, thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure. Right, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.